going to give uh, too much on that because there is some pretty big service arguments uh, involved in it originally, but neither one of us was ever a part of that. And, uh, you know, we both kind of viewed that two regions that shared a state um, should probably be doing a little bit more to get along and share some services. So, uh, Ramon, do you want to add anything to the backstory there? Yeah, um, I understood that there was a backstory to that. And I believe how me and Matt came to work together was the process where the RDs came together and made it a point to bring me and Matt together to uh, be able to start learning how to share services and bring some unity back between the regions. I believe the RD was Jeff P and for South Florida and their region RD for Florida was Mark B. And uh, I remember him coming to me and saying, you know, would you consider sharing services? Uh, there's this guy, Matt, out there and he's the PR chair and you're the, the PR coordinator. And uh, would you consider that? And I was like, absolutely, why not? Um, I never understood what happened back in the day when the two regions felt like they didn't need it to communicate, but that's a century ago as far as I'm concerned. I wasn't clean, I wasn't there for it, and it was irrelevant. Absolutely. and. Uh... I remember we started by doing um, a SAM show or a FAM show workshop um, on prescription drug abuse, if I remember correctly. That's um, correct. We showed up to this thing and it was, uh, you know, Ramon made the mistake of letting me book the hotel. Um, <laughs> and it, was, it was the first time we ever worked together. I come from a region where we're very, very penny pinching with stuff. And Ramon really wanted to stay on site so that there was better communication, but I found a hotel for like a quarter of the price, about a mile and a half away. And uh, I remember the first thing Ramon said to me when he showed up is at least we got the hookers covered because they were everywhere. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was, it, it did work out to be a very successful event. We made a lot of inroads. I think, uh, you know, what happened there eventually ended up to you uh, actually connecting with Pam Bondi, who was the state attorney general at the time, you know, and when we, we walked in, you know, without any real um, misconceptions about what we could or couldn't do, you know, all the past stuff didn't really weigh on us at all. Um, so we, we pretty much hit it off really well right away. And that segued very quickly into within the next couple of years, we had um, I went up and did work groups with Ramon and Dominic and a few other people to, we made a statewide meeting list that was based on the BMLT. Um, we actually joined together in one BMLT server to cover most of the state, except for uh, Ke Kelly's piece up there in the panhandle. And, uh, and eventually it led to a statewide helpline, which to my knowledge was the first multi-regional statewide helpline uh, in the country. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about any of that there, Ramon? I, th I think the process started with Bill bridging those gaps, um, backlogged a little bit as me and you enhanced our personal recovery and truly became um, working together, not as trusted servants working together, but as two friends working together. Um, my first experience with Matt was we had already arranged a hotel and we were getting ready for, to go for that event. And I had a sponsee that was celebrating in Miami and I live in Clearwater. So I drove down to Miami and I'm in the room and we give it, you know, we get the sponsee his uh, five year medallion and Matt was sitting in the audience and we went out to eat and we started like just building that bond of our personal recovery, which has led us into service together, um, I remember we were looking at creating a work group. We come from a work group project, um, project-based region in the Florida region. So we had created, a, the RCMs had created a work group to look into a regional helpline to save some money on the areas that struggle because not all areas are healthy um, financially when I say healthy. So 
the idea came of, well, let's talk to South Florida about this. And South Florida already had a 1-800 number. So we started a work group and that was the process of building that 1-800 number that still functions today. But what I really enjoyed about that and what's made it so easy for us to communicate was that one of the regions actually changed their regional meetings so that it would not conflict with the other regional. We used to always meet on the odd months. Now one of the regions meets on the even month and the other one on the odd months so that we can travel and see each other on a regular basis and keep the services and the communication open for H and I, um, our H and I chair, I mean, uh, coordinator at the time, Gilbert, uh, was doing a lot of traveling down there during the regions and you know, we help expand the behind the walls. And I think that was the part that actually brought us together for the 1-800 helpline. Am I not correct, man? Yeah, and there was actually a, another interesting thing. You know, I mean, our, our personal um, recovery and, and working together and talking about more than, you know, just service. I mean, we're, we've connected on a, on a much deeper level than that, but I, I believe that our higher powers played a huge role in this because right after we started discussing this statewide helpline thing, we had just, we had just nailed down a service that we wanted to use. We nailed down how it was going to be structured and they had just sent it back to the Florida regions groups um, to discuss it. And it was a different service than what Florida, South Florida was using at the time. And what happened is as soon as they sent theirs back to the groups, our whole helpline crashed in South Florida. It just was broken and it had been sold a couple times, so no one knew how to fix it. So while they were deciding whether or not they even wanted to be a part of this, our region switched over to what we had already decided we were going to do as a shared service. So that made the transition really that much easier because as soon as we'd figured all that out, like ours just took a dump. And it was like our higher power said, this is what you guys are going to do. So go ahead and get ahead on this. And we did. So that was really cool, kind of the way that that worked out. Um, and, and we definitely do. Like we're, we're involved in a lot of service together and bridging the gaps between the two regions and all that, which is almost non-existent at this point. Like you don't, you don't hear about Florida, South Florida arguments anymore. You just don't. Um, I don't know that I ever experienced them when I first got clean, but I've been told about them. Um, and now they're just, it's, it's a non-issue completely, um, which I've been told is, is kind of a miracle for those that were involved in this before us and everything that I've heard about it. Um, but it's just been awesome. We, we also, like I said, we, we created a statewide meeting list that had every meeting in the state of Florida. Um, it was about yay sick. It's like, a uh, little over 2,000 meetings between the two of us and a little piece of Alabama, Northwest Florida. Um, it was strictly for service. It had to be pre-ordered. And I think it's broken now because of the BMLTs that we're using. But, you know, it was, it's, it's been an amazing experience to, to bridge that gap and just to, to work with Florida Region. I've had nothing but pleasant experiences with them up there. And uh, I'm really grateful that I got to be a part of all this. I agree. Um, the, the services still continue. I mean, this is something that me, me and Matt, my, Matt and myself got an opportunity to participate in 2013, and now we're in 2020, and our public relations people are still planning events together. Our helpline people are, are still working together to better the helpline, and, and I think what, that's where building the bridges have come. It was, you know, it started with two individuals, turned into four individuals, and, and it's just been something constant that continues to grow, which has made sharing services very simple um, because there's a line of communication, and, um, and it's been a great experience. I know that in the personal recovery with Matt, at one time I was going through a very, really hard time in my area because I was the facilitator, and I was the co-facilitator and we made a decision to, uh, to work on a project that we were directed to work on. And uh, some people didn't like it. And I remember being pop shots being taken at us. And I remember an old timer telling me, Ramon, when you're a service, you put a big bullseye on your back. 
And um, today I understand that, you know, when we do the things that we do, uh, but in my personal recovery, Matt was my go-to guy at that point. And I think that that is something that has strengthened our relationship as the zone um, came together. I think Matt was saying it earlier, we used to meet two times a year for breakfast. Um, now we meet on a regular basis, on a regular basis, and we've been able to learn to share services between all the regions. And remember that we have a couple of island nations. We also have Bermuda, we have Bahamas, and we have Trinidad and Tobago that are in our both regions. And uh, we've been able to bridge those gaps within the zone itself. Um, when they created the task force, I remember getting an email and uh, at the first meeting, which was three years ago about, right? And the first meeting came and I remember Matt saying, well, Ramon is well versed in CBDM, so I nominate him for facilitator. And it was just the other day that I got to remove, remove myself and became the liaison, and that's a whole different thing. But it's been more, um, it's been exciting to be able to watch something grow and share services that has just strengthened our fellowship. And, um, and sometimes I think that we forget that, that it's important for us to share services to just because I don't have experience within my little circle doesn't mean that I don't have the ability to go out and seek that experience and ask for help. You know, if you don't have an H&I committee, reach out to someone that does have an H&I committee and ask them to come and help. And I think that is one of the things that we've been able to, to learn to share services and build that bridge um, that we can invite our, our neighbors to come over and help us in that process. Um, I don't really haven't met a trusted servant that doesn't say, no, I'm not willing to help. Um, but I know that if we don't ask, how do we build those bridges? How do we share those services? We have to ask for that help. And that whole facilitator thing, Ramon, I have a little uh, confession to make to you about that. That was kind of a manipulative move to do that. Reason being, like, you had the experience and knowledge and I really wanted you to be involved in it. And I knew from the start with your level of integrity and service that if you got stuck with a position that you would just stay there and never go away. So that was the whole reason for doing that to you. <laughs> did you just do an eight, a nine step on me? I did, yes sir. <laughs> well, I don't know that I would even amend on it though because I think you came from it too. It was a beautiful thing. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. Um, I think really here what we're talking about is I, I was on this uh, webinar last week and, and I heard members sharing about how they're struggling with their H&I or, or their helpline people. And I think this is the topic that came about to my understanding is to, you know, reach out to other people, reach out to other areas and other regions. I definitely would just not go rogue. I, I bring it to the body first and make sure they'd be okay with it. Um, but I don't believe that there's anything wrong with that, especially on the shared services. I mean, you know, we do FATA once a year and FATA, the total cost on FATA could only be from three to $4,000. Um, and that's on the low ball that's staying at uh, our r and B. I I think they call them. Um, however, I'm opposed to staying to the r, &R and um, by staying, at, by doing the FATA and staying at the main hotel. And it was quite expensive to stay there, but by staying there, I was able to uh, build a bridge with the um, Attorney General of Florida and actually meet the governor and, and sit down with them and have a conversation about Narcotics Anonymous and what Narcotics Anonymous done, does. And their interpretation of our program was totally different. So after we got off the table, you know, we were sitting at the table with them having this discussion. And when we got off the table, um, they had a different perspective and we were able to send them literature and there was, there was some communication started behind that. So sometimes when my perspective is when we bring two regions together, they can resume a course. What winds up happening is it gives us the ability to be more present and the ability to be more present gives us the ability to share more about what narcotics anonymous is. I think at a table, um, when we're standing at a table and we're handing out literature and we have those three minute conversations is great. 
but like in Narcotics Anonymous, the meeting happens before the meeting and the meeting happens after the meeting. And when you're in places like that, those are the times when you really get to talk to the professionals and have a little bit more in-depth conversation. So by sharing services, again, and building those bridges, we've been able to achieve a little more within the government structure of our area. I think the other big takeaway from what we did um, is that no matter how much you think that those service bodies don't get along, there's not a lot of truth in that. Um, Cause I, I, I believe we were pretty much both told that this couldn't work because of the difference of philosophies that the regions had, you know, they were a CBDM and fellowship development. We're still an old school Robert's rules of order, full standing committees, you know, very different philosophies and structures within the two regions. And when we got together and really started looking at it, there was no truth that our regions didn't get along. There were a few people in our regions that didn't get along. Correct. And that doesn't become hard to overcome once you, you realize that it's not the regions. Like our regions work together really well. Yes. Um, we just had to overcome a few people that didn't like it because they carried some old resentments basically. Um, and we never carried those, we never had those. And a majority of our regions now, a majority of the people that are involved don't have those and never experienced that. So, I mean, you know, they, they used to refer to the line between our regions as the wall that Grateful Dave built. And uh, that does not seem to be a reality anymore at all. I don't know that it ever really was, so. So I was thinking as like, we're still talking about building bridges and, and sharing services, uh, being part of the, uh, the South to East Zonal Forum about two months ago, I think about two, three months ago, we made a decision to change, the, the body made a decision to change its um, meeting dates so that we can coordinate with the Northeast Zonal Forum. And we've been doing that now and we've been working on a project plan to create videos. And I know that there's other members that aren't part of NEZ app that are also participating, but maybe Matt, you can share on that and let's wrap it up. Yeah, I think there's actually a whole section of this where I think uh, Dennis is gonna get into that specifically. But I think that piece about how both with Florida and South Florida and Southeastern Zonal Forum and the Northeastern Zonal Forum, one of the major pieces that makes those collaboration work is actually scheduling the meetings of each in a way that they are able to attend each other so that we can continue the communication. I think that Absolutely. was big for us. And I think that's uh, also something that's being big between the two zones. So I, I think that is definitely an important piece and thanks for bringing that up, Ramon. You're welcome. Also, thank you for allowing me to be of service and share your day. God bless everyone and have a happy holiday.